So the ramifications here are enormous for parenting, school, religion. Isn't that where most people think they get their sense of right and wrong from? I think the parallels are nice. So I'll just say a, a sort of a nice story. Um, I, my wife and I adopted a little girl from, from Russia several years ago who came to us at the age of two. Uh, so she was already speaking Russian. And uh, in Massachusetts, the state recommends taking a social worker on who will uh, help you uh, with a child's adjustment. And we were totally fine with that. So the social worker, after meeting with our daughter for a while, said, um, your daughter is language delayed. And I said, well, what do you mean by language delayed? She said, well, you know, she's not really speaking English yet. I said, but she's just come to the United States only three weeks ago, and she's speaking Russian. <laughs> and she said, well, don't worry. You know, we can teach her language. And I think that's the sort of the same problems, that people think that they're teaching their kids language, but they're not, because kids are operating on this completely unconscious, intuitive way, and they're growing language the way they're growing their arms in some sense. That doesn't mean that the parents aren't giving content to what's going on. I mean, the child's not born with the word toaster in its head, and nor is a child born with a rule that's explicit that says, don't kill people of age X who have a certain color and so forth. So there are generic principles or computations in the language of science that structure the learning process. And so in the same way that when the child says, I went to the market, and the parent says, no, you went to the market, and they go, I went to the market very happily, is the same sense in which when a child does something, the corrections are going to have very little effect at some level. The kid is hypothesis testing all the time in the moral domain, the way they're testing in the language domain.